Hey scholars, good to be back with you. And today I'd like to go over centroids. Now centroids are something you see a lot if you do statics or strength of materials, but it isn't always quite clear what they are. There's mathematical descriptions and we'll go over that. But I want to talk mostly about what they are physically. I'll give you some physical descriptions that maybe will help a little bit. So here's the thing. I think we all already know what centroids are. We just didn't know what they were called. How many of you have been in a playground and been on a seesaw or teeter-totter? I'm not sure what they're called where you live. But here's what they look like. There's a pivot in the middle. Looks like that. And there's a bar that goes back and forth and it's got a seat on each end. Okay. There's a pivot right there. This thing can go back and forth. And what do you do? You put a kid on each end, it goes up and down, and when you're a little kid, you think that's fun. So, if you have a kid sitting here, there's a kid, and a kid sitting there, there's another kid. All right? If they weigh the same, and this arm here is the same, okay, can we see that all right? We can, okay, good arrow there and right here if those two lengths are the same and those kids weigh the same amount it just sits there now it does this is usually a pretty good pivot so it doesn't take a whole lot of force to make this thing go up and down that's kind of what makes it fun for little kids well what hey you know what you do you put two little two kids here and then that side with its terrible kid there we go terrible the kid right there and that side goes down what you've done is you've made it so that the moment here is not equal to the moment there anymore what you need to do is figure out a way to make the centroid of this entire structure so the structure being the teeter-totter with both kids on it or all three kids on it you need to make the centroid right there so what do you do well all right, that doesn't, well that doesn't work um, so let's uh, change this. Let's put two kids on it. But if you put the kids in there, so this isn't L over anymore. This is maybe L1, and that's L2 to the center of those little kids. Now all of a sudden it does balance. The sum of your moments equals zero, and so it balances. Okay? So that's a teeter totter. Now if you're a parent, what you'll do is you'll find out you got little kids here and they want to sit on one side and you want to sit on the other. Well, I'm about 200 pounds and when I was doing this, my little, which is uh, 93 kilograms or something like that, um, my kids were a lot smaller than I was. So what they would do is they, I would put my little kids out here. Okay, so there's thing one and there's thing two. Okay, if you don't know what thing one and thing two are, go read Cat in the Hat by Dr. Seuss, one of the classics. Okay, there's me. Well, that's not true anymore. What we found out is I would go down, all right? Because even though our lengths are now the same, let's change this, okay? That length and that length are the same. I weigh so much more than the sum of those two, down we went. The centroid, okay, was over here somewhere. Okay, the centroid of this structure, the structure being the bar with me and the kids on it, was over there, so down I went. Well, how do we move the centroid back? Well, there's no more bar back here, and I didn't have any more kids, so I had to move inwards. What I did is I'd move this way, leave, move the seat and sit out here on the bar somewhere, and move the centroid to where it was there again, and then we could play on the seesaw or the teeter-totter. Again, I don't know what they call it where you are. Um, so we already know what a centroid is. We've already all done this experiment anyway. All right, so let's, let's go to something a little more maybe technical than that. I made a triangle, okay? And this is made out of a uh, three-quarter inch particle board, so it's like 22 millimeters or something like that, 20 millimeters. Um, and I did, this is a uniform material. Just had some down in the guitar lab, so I cut it out on a bandsaw. Um, 
sanded it. It's, it really is a right triangle, or you can go that way if you want. Okay. Now, if you look it up, you'll find out that the centroid of a triangle is one third of the way up here and one third of the way over here. Well, what's that mean physically? It means that if I were to try to balance this, and I could find a point at which it balanced on the end of my finger. Now this is going to be tough to do because even though it, when it balances it isn't really stable. I'm going to play some games here. I've marked the centroid here on this and there it is. It's balancing. I am holding it by its centroid only. Now if you can see this here, I really am only holding it by one finger. I've really got it balanced on the end of my finger there. All right, I'm having some trouble but there it is. Okay. And the way that worked is, I put my finger on the centroid. The centroid of a thin, flat plate like this is where the, uh, all the sum of the moments are going to be zero if I support it in one place. Now, it's kind of hard to see, so I'm going to sketch it in here. I've got it drawn in pencil, but let me draw it here with my marker. There. Okay, that's a third of the way. Let me this third of the way from here. There. Okay, that's a third. That. 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 That's a third. So there's the centroid of a triangle. Now, what if I don't have a ruler, yardstick, meter stick? How do I find the centroid? Well, if you need to find the experiment, the centroid of, of a uh, solid. See if I can say that right. But solid, experimentally, what you can do is just hang it from a couple of points. So I'm going to hang it. I'm going to hold it by my finger so it can it can pivot there. All right, so let me sketch this in here. All right, and I'm going to go straight down from that point. Okay, let's go down maybe. That's pretty vertical, not great, but it's close enough. And let's grab this point right here. Well, if I go straight down from that point, because what's going to happen is since this can pivot, this thing is going to align itself naturally using gravity to where the uh, centroid is right below the point at which it's pivoting, the point at which it's supported. So there's the point I found right there. Well, is that right? Yes, it is. Well, can I balance right there? Now this was pretty rough, so let me see if I can, I got pretty close. Let me see if I can do this here. Oops. There. That's pretty close. There's a little bit of error here. So what I could do to minimize the error is support from a couple of different locations and find pretty much where all the lines come together. I could also be a little more careful. Maybe I could use a, a plumb bob to get a vertical line uh, that's truly vertical, not the eyeball vertical I was just using. So this works. This is how you find a centroid. Well, it works on that simple shape. Let's try something a little crazier. I went down to the lab and I found this. Now, I don't know any idea what this was. I think it's a sign that the students were cutting out. So it's kind of a gear shaped thing, which without this hole means the centroid would be right in the exact center of this circle. But this hole is in it. And it's not centered anywhere, so I don't know where the centroid is now. I don't have any idea. But what I could do, let's support it right there. And let's do what I just did before. This isn't mine, so maybe I should cut a, use a pencil here. So I can erase it later if I want. So there. Okay, there's a vertical line drawn from that support. Well, let's support it on this other, this other uh, corner here with just my finger. And draw a vertical line down from where my finger is supporting. And that's pretty close. So what I've got now, if you can see there's, there's a point, and it's close to the center, but not exactly, because this thing is in the way. This isn't on any, any uh, axis of symmetry here. So does this work? Look at that. I'm not quite. I'm pretty close. 
I'm moving this just a couple of millimeters. I'm having to support it with this hand, but that's pretty darn close. Okay, so I just found the centroid. There's what I found, and it's pretty much where those two lines intersect. To draw this here, there's what I found. And the way I did this was I hung it by a point, draw a line vertical from that point. Hang it by another one, draw a line vertical. And if I had done maybe up here and drawn a line vertical from that support point, those lines should all cross at the centroid. That's physically what a centroid means. So I'll put this down here. All right, that's physically what a centroid means. What does it mean mathematically? Well, if I want to find a centroid, really what I'm trying to find is the point on some structure, some object, where it balances, where it, uh, the sum of the moments are going to be zero if I support it there. Well, let's take a real simple shape. Okay, a rectangle. We all know where the centroid of that is. There's x and there's y. Okay. Well, I, by symmetry, arguments of symmetry, you know it's going to be in the center, the geometric center of this. Well, how do you prove that? What you can do is divide this thing into little boxes. Okay, little itty bitty boxes and add up, there's the origin. Okay, so if I want to know x bar, I'm going to sum all those boxes. I'm going to sum the, the distance times the area of each of those boxes. That's the okay, distance is going to be the distance of the center of the box from the origin. And I'm going to sum, uh, multiply that by the area. And that's a moment. Okay. And just divide it by area. That's how you find the centroid. That's the mathematical definition. So I'm going to add up all these little boxes. Well, what if I don't have something nice and square like that, some nice simple shape? Well, if I divide up those uh, into enough boxes and I make those small enough, this becomes an integral and that becomes an integral. Add up a whole bunch of teeny, teeny little boxes, you've got an integral. So what we've done now is I've got the, I've shown you the physical definition of a centroid. Uh, using a seesaw or a teeter-totter. I've shown you we've already done this already. We all kind of know what centroids are anyway. And I showed you how to find a centroid on two uh, planar sort of flat surfaces. This would work on 3D uh, objects as well. You just have to hang it for more points. So you'd find the, the point in three space where all your vertical lines cross. So there you go. That's what a centroid is. I hope this helps and I'll talk to you next time.